Good morning. Today we're talking about music notation software. We are going to analyze and use science to figure out which one I like the best. You may have noticed that I am not wearing my interdimensional portholes today, and that is because I cannot take the mask fog any longer. It's too much of a struggle. So I bought contact lenses. Tell me how pretty my eyes look right now. So there are quite a lot of music notation software, and I heard good things about most of these. However, we will only be looking at MuseScore and Finale today, because those are the ones that I'm the most experienced in. But compose a comment if you like one of the other softwares, and tell me why. Also, at the very end of the video, I will be talking about EMC Marching Madness 2021, a very exciting online contest, and the grand prize is $100 cash. So I created a very scientific and well-researched point system here, and we're going to determine which one of these programs is better out of a score of 100. Starting with the price, because that's the very first thing you're going to do, is get the program. MuseScore is free, $0. Can't get any better than that, 20 out of 20 points. Finale costs $600, unless you are an academic slash theological, whatever that means. Or if you're a college student, it's $99. However, I did not have to pay a single cent for a finale. The Marine Corps did. Because I write for the Commandant's own. So you can thank Uncle Sam for sponsoring this video. $600 is incredibly overpriced, in my opinion. I'm sure most of you would agree with that. So finale will only get 6.9 points out of the total of 20. So I wrote some epic beats out caveman style with pencil and paper, and we're gonna transfer that over onto the music notation software. But first, let's see how this sounds with real drums. Amazing, isn't it? But you can barely read the shoot music at the bottom of the screen because it's chicken scratch. They don't call me the chicken man for nothing. So let's get to transcribing this then. So we're gonna first start by setting up the score, which is worth five points. I'm also gonna time this process for each of the programs to get a better assessment on how long this is gonna take. First up is Muse score. Three, two, one, here we go. Muse score has this feature where you can select Muse score drumline battery. So we're gonna. Select that, very convenient. All right, this comes with flubs. Uh, this doesn't have flubs, so we gotta take that out. And that's all we gotta do. So that took one minute and 12 seconds. Pretty fast. And finale, three, two, one, here we go. Finale does not have the option to just pick the drum line. You gotta select each drum individually. Uh, so we got snare line, tenor line, bass drum line, and cymbal line. Where's the cymbal line? Oh, here's the cymbal line, okay. The cymbal line is not within this bracket. Okay, there we go, and time. One minute and 50 seconds. Took quite a lot longer than Muse score. So we'll give Muse score a score of five out of five and Finale a score of four out of five. So from using both these programs for several years, I know already that MuseScore, all the notes that I put in here, they're gonna sound good and look good right away. Finale, however, there are some issues. So if I go to our score manager here, you can see that the sound for the drumline instruments are virtual drumline light. Which you would think that's good because the virtual drumline sounds are very realistic. But it's actually quite a problem and I'm gonna explain why. Okay, so this is something I am working on right now. This is a full score with drumline parts at the bottom. You can see in the score manager, the drumline sounds are not set to virtual drumline. They're like the stock uh, marching drum sounds that came with Finale. So here is how this sounds. <laughs> Sounds okay, right? I mean, you could hear all the drum parts nice and clear. Let's switch that to virtual drumline and see what it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like they're not even working. Well, they are. You just can't hear them because they're so freaking quiet. Yeah, I don't know why the virtual drumline light sounds are really, really obnoxiously quiet in Finale. You can see in the mixer here, uh, snares, tenors, and bass drums are all maxed out at the top. The only way you can hear them is if you lower everything else like all the way down. 
There they are. <laughs> okay then. But then I gotta crank my computer speaker to maximum, and then I always forget that I did that, and then I watch a video on YouTube, and it sounds like... So for those reasons, that's why I do not use the VD light sounds. I always use the stock finale sounds. Even though they don't sound as good, at least I can hear what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next category, which is the note input. As in, we're just gonna write all the rhythms out with no details, just the rhythms only, and we're gonna score it out of 25. The Muse score in three, two, one, start. So writing double stops in here is a little bit of a struggle. You can see uh, nothing happens if I just put the same note over top of a note. So you gotta like select a rim shot, and do like a rim shot and then lower it down. Kind of annoying, but not the worst thing that ever happened. Yeah, and then writing these over the bar triplets is always a struggle on every program I've ever used. Although Finale is way worse than MuseScore. Actually, that was the whole reason I switched to MuseScore in the first place, was because Finale could not figure out how to write a 69th lit within a 69th lit for this cadence that I did. So I tried it out in MuseScore and it actually worked. So I've been using MuseScore ever since. Yeah, so each of these programs, uh, they work quite differently with the way you input notes. And MuseScore has the keyboard shortcuts above the instrument key, so that's very convenient. And then creating tuplets in MuseScore is real simple. It's a uh, command plus uh, whatever number your tuplet is. And I'm just pressing the keyboard shortcut. C, 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 B, 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 at least on base five, which is A. MuseScore's symbol technique selection is not that good. There's no like crash choke or tap choke. That's hi-hat. That's his suck. Yeah, I, just, I guess I'll just put a hi-hat as the crash choke. It's the closest thing. Writing for symbols is a struggle, people. It's a struggle. Okay, we're about to put the last note, which is a unison zing. Uh, which one's the zing? Is it this one? Yes. And time. It took 17 minutes and 59 seconds. So that was just writing the rhythms out. We didn't put any dynamics or accents or diddles or flams or anything. It's just the rhythms. And the only issues we really had with that were these over the bar line tuplets. You can see from the caveman version how I want this to look and it is not possible to make it look like that. This is what it's gotta look like. Also writing for symbols is less than desirable. So for those things, we are gonna give MuseScore a 20 out of 25. Okay, on to Finale here. So there's, <laughs> there's some things you need to know about inputting the notes into Finale. So on all of the marching drums, there are several different sounds all on the same note. It's really hard to position the mouse cursor to get it right on where you want. Like I am barely moving my finger up the directional pad to get to snare section hits. Also, buzz rolls are a separate note, as you can hear right there, but it does not indicate that it's a buzz roll, so you have to also come over here to the articulation tool and add in the buzz roll. Whereas in MuseScore, uh, you would just click the note you want a buzz roll and then put the buzz roll tremolo on it and it makes it a buzz roll. The tenor drum Spock drums, so there are two different Spock drums that you can notate, but it's the same sound, so you can't really hear the difference. The buzz roll on the Spock drum is on some other drum. The bass drum left hand notes on the splits are all on bass one. That's not a bass five. That's a bass five. Even unison left hand hits are just bass one split. The cymbal line is complete garbage, so you can't write any splits unless you go in and like manually edit it. I never bothered doing that because that takes forever. And the sounds are not even marching cymbals. These are all drum set sounds. And since I do write split cymbal parts, I have to do this extra step here. I'll go in and write in if it's a split or not. So if it's cymbal one, I'll write number one. Cymbal player number two, I'll write number two. If it's a unison cymbal note, I'll write a U. So with all that in mind, let's get on with the timer here. Three, two, one, here we go. 
So as I said before, Finale struggles with tuplets, and here's an example. So this triplet is going to be double stops, and I'm going to add the second note on to this right now. <laughs> and it just takes the triplet away. Yeah, if you want a double stop, you can't have a triplet. You're just not allowed to have both. But the way I figured out to fix this is to write the remainder of the beats in the bar, and then you can add double stops to the tuplets. Because <laughs> that makes total sense. Some more tuplet struggles we're about to have here. So this is where the nine lits are gonna go. So I got my half note, and we're gonna want nine sixteenths in the space of one half. Looking good so far. So then we're just gonna add our nine sixteenth notes in. Five, six, seven, eight. Nope, we're not allowed to add the ninth one. You're just not allowed to. And when the bar fills in with rests, it has this it's incorrect note value. There should be one more 16th note, not a double dotted 32nd note. That math is wrong. So the way we can fix this is to start this rhythm in another measure, do the exact same note values. And since we are not at the end of the measure, it will put the correct amount of notes into this nine lit. Then we gotta select, copy, select, Paste. And then it works. For some reason, it will not work at the end of the bar unless you copy and paste it from a different bar. I'm also just realizing that there is no rim click sound on the bass drums. I could have sworn that they had that, but well, apparently not. So we'll just put unison notes and change the note heads on the rim clicks to the X. It's not gonna sound like a rim click and playback, but at least it looks like one. And then the last thing we gotta do is flip all these stem directions because Finale just <laughs> makes them all in different directions. We want them all up. That's the drumline way to do it, is to be all up. Just like that. 24 minutes and 56 seconds. So that took about seven more minutes than MuseScore did, and this is a very short composition, so when you're doing long compositions, that stuff is gonna add up to hours. It's just all these small things just add up, like the tuplets not working right, the problem of getting the right note on the same note as all of the same sounds on each of the drums. It's like hard to get the mouse to be in the right spot. And it's the same issue as Muse score with this over the bar line tuplet. I don't want it to look like that, but that's how I have to make it. And the symbol writing is freaking horrible. Like, I want to see split parts in here, not all of <laughs> these numbers and letter U's. So I'm going to give Finale a 15 out of 25 points on that. Okay, next we're gonna add all of the details in. We put all the accents, all the dynamics, all the diddle markings, everything. So in MuseScore, this is quite simple. You just select whatever note you want to add things onto, and then select whatever you want over here, and it does it. Finale, you cannot select individual notes. You can either select one note at a time, or you can mass select a bunch of notes in a row. Let's say I want to make all of these top hat accents. I could drag and select, and then I gotta open this box, and then find, there it is. Click OK, and then it does it. So let's find out which one is gonna take longer. I already know what's gonna take longer. Muse score is first. Three, two, one, go. Last sticking done. The thing that annoys me the most about Muse score is how it puts the sticking way down here below the dynamics. I want that above the dynamic. So if you select all similar elements in the same staff, you can raise it up. But now the dynamics are like merged with the sticking, so you gotta select all of the similar dynamic elements in the same staff and lower that down. And the sticking freaking goes with it for some reason. So then we gotta select the sticking again. The main problem with the freaking sticking is when there is not a dynamic written, it just puts it like up inside of the notes. So the way to fix that is to add a random dynamic then select only those stickings in this system, bring those down to merge with the dynamic, and then delete the dynamic. That's still kind of screwed up, hold on. OK, 
Okay, everything looks good. And then the problem is when you export the parts, then the sticking is jacked up again and you have to fix the individual parts. But we're not doing that for this, so let's stop the timer. 16 minutes and 32 seconds to do all of that. So overall, this side panel here with all the articulations, this is very, very convenient and makes this process go very fast. The only annoying thing is the sticking and that can honestly get pretty frustrating. So for that, MuseScore gets a 21 out of 25. Finale's turn in three, two, one, go. Okay, just gotta fix these last few triplet markings to make sure they look good. Uh, oh, these freaking, the lyrics tool adds these like weird lines in here after some of them. Uh, it's kind of annoying, you gotta go in and delete them all. 23 minutes and 54 seconds. So once again, Muse score is faster than Finale by about seven minutes, and this was only an eight bar phrase. That's quite a lot of a difference. I think it has a lot to do with just the way that the program is set up. Like in MuseScore, all of this stuff is just right here for you. And in Finale, you gotta like go into all these extra dialog boxes. This is a lot of extra mouse clicking. However, the way you input the sticking and the dynamics in Finale is definitely more organized than MuseScore. But the placement of the tuplet markings, that gets incredibly annoying and very frustrating to fix all of them. So Finale will get a score of 17 out of 25. And the last part of this contest is the playback. How does this sound compared to actual drums? Because we got to get a good idea of what this is going to sound like in real life. So for comparison, let's once again hear those real drums. Hold on, hold on. Oh man, yeah, Finale has uh, some interesting features here. So you gotta set this crap, uh, the human playback, to marching band, or else it just straight up changes the rhythm when you put the flams in. Okay, Finale, take two. So I feel like both programs give me a good reference to what it's going to sound like in real life, but I do think that MuseScore sounds are closer to what actual drums sound like. So MuseScore will get a 23 and Finale will get a 22. But just for poops and giggles, let's see what Virtual Drumline Lite sounds like playing in Finale. Make sure you turn the sound back down before something loud happens, because that would be really annoying. So the final scores are in. Muse score, 89, finale, 65.9. So after resizing the pages, this is what they look like side by side, and they pretty much look identical. But it took me about 15 extra minutes doing it in finale versus doing it in Muse score. And this was only eight bars, so imagine writing like a whole drumline show. That time adds up a lot, which is why I strongly prefer using MuseScore over Finale. But as I said in the beginning, make sure you compose a comment and let me know what software you like using. Hopefully this video was informative. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. Fun fact, I wrote this part out using MuseScore. And I wrote this part out with something else. And have a good morning. Marching Madness 2021, very exciting times with a grand prize of $100. Hey, if you're a college student, you can spend that $100 on Finale. The rules of this contest, create an epic video no longer than two minutes. 
Upload it to YouTube.com and make sure you use hashtag EMC Marching Madness 2021 in the title. I will watch every single entry and then pick my favorite ones to feature in a video and then the fans will vote on which one they think is the best and decide who gets the $100. I'm not sure how many videos I'm gonna pick total, just however many I like. At least five, most likely more. You can do anything you want in the video. It's probably a good idea to play an instrument though. It could be any instrument. I mean, you could play no instrument or do some other talent. I don't know. Just make sure whatever you decide to do, I need to like it so it gets in the contest. And then other people need to like it after it gets in the contest so that you win. The last day to submit your entry is Saturday, March 20th at 1159 PM. So get on it and make something amazing. I expect greatness from you.